slight uh, distraction from what I was meant to be doing but I've kind of just done a little H&M haul on my Instagram it's end of financial year sales right now and I am in one of my outfits <laughs> and we've lost our selfie light up here we're barely running on anything up there the only thing that's keeping me strong is this ring light from Kmart which is plugged into the wall and I am in desperate need of a lighting solution which I will attend to when I get the uh, funding for that only because I've had a bit of a spendy spend on my end of financial year. I have already filmed this another day, but I had no makeup on. And I'm kind of thinking, oh, whilst I'm glammed up, I really want to do a proper haul. But I'll wait for my lighting to get back on the road. And uh, I'm going to pick up my little one early from school. And we're going to hit up a bit of lunch. Because Mama is really hungry. Tummy is still growling because it ain't forgetting that it just wants to be fed constantly. But anyway, this is my outfit, this cute little two-piece before I disrobe. Um, and I also rediscovered my beautiful shoes from Amazon here. It's a brand by The Iconic, but I just loved the Italian vibe of these shoes. The pure white with a lovely ankle strap and just that sort of crochet-ish design on the front. But so nice to feel glammed up. I haven't vlogged for a couple of weeks now which you probably have no idea about. I always film way way ahead just to keep myself balanced when basically the shit hits the fan which is all the time. I'm gonna go get some food and then we'll continue on with the selling of used fashion and carrot cake because we ain't forgetting about the food portion of the video. It's the most important part. This is my outfit of the day in real life. I'm going super baggy with my cotton on loose straight jeans which are my favorite jeans and I've broken the rules. You're generally meant to go either a tighter top and looser bottoms or tighter bottoms looser top but I've just I'm in a comfy mood and girls got to eat situation. I think we're going to get pancakes. But of course layered my jewellery over the top of knitwear which I absolutely love to do. Watch on, keeping it very utilitarian for the winter season. Just some combat boots. So I never do this combo but I thought I'd share it with you because um, I'm feeling very very comfortable I must say. And these are the new nails all done. I've gone for a squared off look with a bit of a like an upside down triangle thing. So a really different way to do French nails for me, but I'm rather growing to like it. At first I was like, oh, it's a bit too sharp. I think now I like the modern edge to it. Yeah, loving it. Lucky I've got vanilla ice cream. <laughs> was it bad? Oh well. Try some good health, guys. I don't know how I became the one that got so into this. <laughs> but we found all these words that weren't even on the list. Look at this. See, we found chess. We found 
berries. Like these aren't even on the list. you a real life visual of the makeup because I am using Charlotte Tilbury's beautiful skin and I tell you what the color is so much more better matched to my skin tone especially when I've got a bit of fake tan on so it's holding up rather rather well hasn't oxidized nice and dewy and also gives a nice flawless finish a bit of pore blurring as well just thought I'd show you in the natural daylight but very pleased with how it's turning out I might even end up purchasing it Oh, we've just gotten back home and you girl need to powder. And don't you love how I'm meant to be selling my stuff to get some shmoney and I end up spending it on protein pancakes. But I have to say, they were actually all right. And I actually feel a lot better in the tummy. And it did have a slight protein powder taste, but I feel better knowing that I had a semi-healthy lunch, which, you know, kind of wasn't, but any excuse will do. Just using By Terry's Hyaluronic Hydra Powder, the best powder ever. As you can see, it's just taken that extreme shine off, but just left me with a very nice sheen, you know? And super impressed with my makeup today. It's really hard to tell in this bedroom light where I do most of my filming. I've only got artificial lighting here, whereas in the daylight against the window, I've got, you can actually see the color for what it is. Before we get into uh, the whole concept of, you know, things going out before things come into my wardrobe, this arrived. I couldn't help myself. Hi. <laughs> yes, I have made another order from the Iconic. This was 30% off. It's again, end of financial year sales, ETC. Ooh, and this is a uh, quite a big one, but it was 30% off. And I thought I would just seize the moment because I have had them on my wish list for quite some time. I'm sure you can see by the label what we're looking at here. We have my first Saint Laurent, beautiful leather case. Let's open it. Oh, still comes in plastic. Herring eyewear. Okay. Interesting because I would have sworn it would have said Saint Laurent, you know? Let's have a look. Oh no, we still have our little taggy. Thank you very much. I just love how Saint Laurent has really basic packaging, like it's all black and then just a little logo. We have a pair of sunnies. Now, I only have one designer pair of sunnies. The rest are just one of the mill cheap sunglasses. The only ones that I have are my Ray-Ban, which I've had for many years. Got them on my 30th birthday from my husband. I take care of them so much better than all my other sunglasses, so I felt like I needed an incentive to have another thing to take care of. Not that I have enough to take care of already. Now these, as you can see, are a bit of a cat eye, and they're a tortoise shell. They're unbranded as well, except for a little Saint Laurent logo on the side, which is rather elegant, and it's got a bit of a tortoiseshell section there. So let's give these a go. I don't have a pair of cat eye sunglasses, but I thought this would be really good for winter, actually, and even into summer. You can wear sunglasses all year round, but a real chunky frame sunglass is really nice for the colder months, I thought, which I don't have. So let's assess, shall we? Oh, wow. What are we thinking? I can't wear them all the way up here because I've got a bump on my nose. It would be one that you'd kind of wear like just under the bump, so like this. Now the fact of the matter is they have to stay there, which is interesting. Gives the illusion that I have a smaller nose. That's the whole reason I actually got them was to give the illusion that I have a smaller nose than I actually have. So I'd wear them just there. What do we think, guys? Should we look in the full length mirror? I think this needs a full length moment. And this is actually really funny because I'm short sighted, so I can't see. <laughs> I can't see myself. The good news about these sunglasses, though, I could get prescriptions put in them because they um, don't have branding on the front. And I don't have prescriptions in my Ray Bans because I wanted to keep that little Ray Ban logo on the glass. Whereas this, I could get prescriptions put in and then I can see out of them as well. So what are we thinking? I feel like I look a little bit like Kris Jenner, like family boss. They are so different for me, but I have to say a bit of statement I wear is something everyone needs in their wardrobe. Again, like accessories, they are what make your outfit come together and shine. Without them, as you can see, your outfit can just look very basic, but with a statement bag, statement watch, statement sunglasses, or even a piece of jewelry, shoes, whatever it may be, I've gone shoeless right now, I think it's kind of missing in my wardrobe. So I'm tending towards keeping them 
what do we think? That's better. I can actually see myself. I do have a very small head and I do grant you they kind of take over my face. <laughs> they do, don't they? Ooh, this is one of those things where you wouldn't keep unless you were totally sure about it. And not to mention they weren't ridiculously expensive. Like they were in an affordable or mid-tier price range for a designer pair of sunglasses. It'd be really good for hiding really tired eyes or hangover eyes, I have to say. Let me know in the comments, what do you reckon? Too much or too little? <laughs> or not enough? <laughs> Let me also assess with the hair out. You know what they need? They need bridge supports. That's what it is. If they had little bridge supports, I wonder if I could get them put in so that it kind of just sit on my nose in a certain place. That would be perfect because otherwise they'd be sitting up here and this is not a bar here. Look how cute it makes the nose look when they're sat just in the middle there. And that's a little handy tip for all those lovely ladies out there with our very European noses. If you want to give the little illusion of a little tiny little nose, just pop your sunglasses down a bit. Not to mention then you can actually see the eyebrows. It's actually an aeroplane on my face. Thoughts guys, so many thoughts. But I do have to say the branding looks so, so cute. It is so tempting to keep, but all within reason, of course. Let me have a think on this one. Okay guys, I couldn't help myself. Look what I just found. So apparently you can purchase anti-slip nose pads, like silicone pads that you can stick to the interior of your sunglasses or glasses, $9.95 from Catch, and it makes your glasses anti-slip. I mean, I love the internet. Well, to an extent. You get five pairs pretty good. All right, now I will stop digressing and I'll get on with the rest of the vlog. I received a little parcel before I was going to do my selling on of my wardrobe pieces. I also have found an alternative to what you're going to see in the next clip. And what's coming in the next clip is very exciting. It wasn't planned. So I will cut to that segment here. Here is something that I found as an alternate to the Saint Laurent cat eye glasses. These were really hard to get my hands on and it's actually something from a place I barely order from. In fact, I think I've only ordered from there once before, ASOS. It's not really my style what they pop up on there, but they do have some really nice European brands that you can't get your hands on through any other channel. So it's a really good alternative if you want to order something from a European brand, but you don't want to pay the import price. ASOS is a really good way to obviously try things on and return if they don't suit you uh, in a very easy, <laughs> manageable way. But I came across these glasses and these are the Pool and Bear, I think they're called square cat eye sunglasses they were always sold out and i just missed the boat so many times they finally came into stock there was one left i had my name on it and i finally got them these fit a lot better around my face they're not as wide uh, they're also a little bit flatter on the top so not as dramatic but rather more subtle and i believe this is quite the dupe for a prada pair of sunglasses anyway let's try them on together Yes, 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 yes. Loving this way more. They actually sit on my face. I will uh, link these down below. And I think they are rather suited to my black and beige outfit. So definitely keeping them. I will link them in the description box. And now that we have jumped backwards and forwards and I have quantum leaped you back in time to the present day, let's get on with selling some fashion forward and what I need to do to get stuff sold or what I do to get stuff sold. Little one has come to join me. So once again, I will, uh, I'll be a minute. Back in the land of no light. Yes, we are back in the bathroom for good reason is that we have a backdrop appropriate to take some photos of the clothing that I want to sell on. My room is rather cluttered and the lighting is even worse in there. So I thought we'll make the use of the sunlight streaming through the sunroof here. What do you call it in the house? Hole in the roof, sun roof, solar flare. Enough with the bad terminology, far too much of it in this vlog. Now I have my 
big pile of clothes that I have curated over the last year and just haven't found the time or the chance to take these photos and write up one hefty description. So tip number one, find a nice clean, preferably white backdrop so you're just focusing on the clothing and get a hanger. I'm starting with this lovely piece from Kukai. It's a bodycon dress. I just am not in the frame of mind to be wearing tight clothes anymore in my life. I'm over 30 now. I have been liberated. I don't have to show my body for men anymore. Preferably grab a nice looking hanger, so avoid wiry ones. So just get a decent hanger. I'm using some felt ones that I picked up from Kmart. And obviously find a place to hang it and then we start taking the photos. I'm just going to throw on some more lights to just make sure the place is well lit and I'm just going to be using my phone, nothing too fancy. I'm just going to get a full body shot so to speak and some close-ups and also take photos of any damage to the product so people know exactly what they're buying. So I've just taken a photo of the front, the back and just a little bit of damage to the inseam here at the collar. I also took a picture of the tag so people know it's a genuine label. It's always best to be really specific about sizing as this item of clothing here from Kukai is a size 1 and I don't have a direct translation for that size, I'm assuming it's a 6 to 8. Clearly would not fit me now and I'm just going to take a few general measurements such as the height and the waist measurements and perhaps the shoulders I think that should be enough. Then I just note all these measurements in my phone ready for my listing. And that is basically my job done for the prepping part. Now, next obviously find a platform, create an account. There are lots of selling on used fashion platforms out there. The most popular one at the moment is Depop, but I know there are heaps of other ones that are perhaps more local to your country. Then what you want to do to obviously attract buyers is give a in-depth description as much as possible and really be upfront. If there's any damage, don't hide it because you don't want an unsatisfied customer that's going to give you a bad review. Also pick a reputable seller that's obviously going to keep your details private and that have lots of other customers and really good reviews. So I'm going to list this item via the brand name because mentioning a brand name is a really good way to get people to find your item. There are literally millions online. That's why I'm only selling on clothes that are from particular brands or well-known brands or international brands. There's really no point me selling on fashion that is a bit of an unknown brand or throwaway or fast fashion because everybody kind of knows the quality is really not worth paying for a second time. You might as well just buy it brand new. Also be very clear of what you want from the customer or what the customer wants from you for example I will offer no returns on my product once you buy it there will be no return option and that's just one of the specifications that I have if you're more open to that then that's the conversation that you and your potential buyer needs to have but yeah that is basically it and now I'm wondering why I put this off for so long because I think I can whip these all out in a day let's get going Another thing I like to do is also take pictures of the details or labeling details to some of the items that are perhaps key selling features. Some people really love branding or they love buttons or the accessories that come with the item. For example, this super dry little dungaree jumpsuit, which I have no intention of wearing anymore. I think those shorty short days are quite more than over. Comes with a lovely leather detailing of the brand at the back so I made sure to take a picture of that and also the little mini pocket at the front. So any design details that you think might appeal to your audience definitely make a highlight feature of them. Another tip to making your garment look more appealing is if it is heavily creased such as this one giving it a little steam beforehand would not go astray because the better that it looks on the hanger the quicker it will sell. Just quickly for anyone who's interested 
I am ranging brands in here from Superdry to Kukai. This is a little tiger lily situation. And yes, a very, very bold print. Actually comes with the matching top, but I really do love the top and I intend to keep it. But now that I see this, I'm thinking, should I just keep it? It is very extreme though. Will I wear it really? I don't know. It's You'll never find this again. This is something you would take pictures of the Tiger Lily branding. Oh, I'm getting sucked back into my own wardrobe. I think I'm going to carry on the rest of my day with selling on my wardrobe. Good luck if you want to start up your own little side hustle. Uh, it's a really great way to make a bit of extra cash and then whatever you sell on, you can use that money to replace with something new. Mama is hungry. I'm having at least one snack a day, sometimes up to three snacks a day. I know, wild, but I know me and I know that keeping well fed and well hydrated makes for a very happy vocal. All right, I'm going to have some lunch. Okay, and we are finally on to the baking portion of the video, but before I get onto it, I just thought I would break out my Gorilla Prod, which I hardly use, but I've just discovered a new way to use it. Imagine curling it around a bar. How handy would that be? I could even put it on my, um, on my clothing rail, so that might come in handy for that purpose as well. But anyway, let's break this out for the very special and long-awaited carrot slash banana bread and let me just take you through what is going in this so of course it's going to be a little bit healthy i was inspired for this recipe by macro mike which is my new found protein powder which i think is headlining to my number one favorite i've been through a lot of protein powders and i have different protein powders for different flavor profiles as a consistently yummy brand macro mike you are just everything and I plan to be purchasing more of their flavors anyway enough about me raving about macro Mike so basically I found it on their Instagram for this carrot uh, banana bread so I have some nice ripe bananas I've got all my spices allspice ginger and cinnamon I've got baking powder bicarb I'm using my sugar-free maple syrup for this one it calls for a nut butter I could have used peanut but I've had this sitting in the cupboard for quite some time and I haven't used it so I think I might use up my almond spread from Aldi some gluten-free plain flour and of course the uh, protein which is not only going into the loaf but into the very thick luscious frosting as well and I've put on my most sparkliest slippers for the occasion these are from Peter Alexander with little golden sausage dog how cute and I'm also wearing this new knit from Kmart actually which cost me $25 it's got some wool in there and I just love the oat mile texture and a weave is really luxurious so super happy with this purchase and i've just just rolled it under on the inside and it gives a lovely kind of a mock neck feel to this jumper so i thought i'd just quickly share that little fashion hack with you now this is what the end result is meant to look like with some sprinkled nuts or pecans on top and I've gone ahead and written all the ingredients down on paper as I hate working from my phone I find it really annoying when it just turns off the screen so I've got all my ingredients here including the frosting and what I have to do including the method but I will try to leave as much as possible on the screen as I am making this And I have just discovered that this gluten-free flour is in fact off. I found some little larvae, see that little yellow thing, and some actual weevils in the flour. So, ew, this is getting thrown out, washed, and luckily we have a spare of this. It's pretty organic because usually these kinds of bugs like to live in really organic flour. So, thank you, organ, I guess. <laughs> Okay, it turns out I thought I had some, but in fact I don't. So I'm going to sub some coconut flour instead. And apparently you sub half the amount of coconut flour for regular flour as this is super, super absorbent. It absorbs a lot of liquid. So let's give this a go. This has now become my hybrid once again recipe. I wanted to make it more paleo, so this works out just as fine. <laughs>
sign of a good batter is that you know that when you lick the spoon, the batter tastes good too. So I'm really looking forward to this hybrid protein packed recipe. Okay, so a few modifications. I only used half, well, a quarter of the amount of ginger recommended on the recipe because I'm not a huge fan of ginger in cakes. Like a little bit is fine, there's a bit of heat in the background, but if it's the predominant flavor, I'm not a fan. So I used only half a teaspoon of that and I replaced it with one teaspoon altogether of allspice. Also feel free to add a bit of water to your frosting as mine is a little bit too stiff so I just watered it down a little bit and now it's the perfect spreading consistency. Okay, I think this loaf definitely deserves just a little bit of butter on the side. But apart from that, as you can see, I've already sampled a piece of this cake. And let me tell you, for a carb-free, sugar-free carrot cake, it is da bomb. And this frosting is so thick and creamy. And the fact that it's got bananas and carrot in there, I mean... This is part of my five a day. <laughs> Super healthy. I just can't believe there's no carbs or sugar in here, guys. It's just phenomenal. That Macro Mike buttercream tastes like the real bakery style vanilla buttercream. Mmm. I'm going to enjoy this. And for the topping, I've used the Macadamia Almond and Manuka Honey Granola by Blue Frog, a keto granola. And that makes just the perfect honeyed, sugary topping for the top sorry i'm just salivating too much over my clearly demolished piece of cake so much for putting up with all the jumping around in my video that is largely dictated by three children and a chaotic problematic existence and hence why we end up with these artistic realistic vlogs and i will see you in my next vlog hope you enjoyed and picked up some tips i will leave the sunglasses and anything that i featured makeup wise in the links down below let me know if you give it a try all right